It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And first and foremost, a shout out to Aaron S. and Denise Shapiro. Thank you both to the moon for recently joining my channel and supporting me with your dollars. I appreciate it so, so much. Hope you guys have an amazing day in the garden. And we are having rain here in Southern California and I've been out kind of dodging those raindrops. So I thought I would take a minute just to show you some things around the garden that I found myself either curious about or concerned about. The gutters have drainage. Every about six inches or so we had run a hole. Uh, so that's very, very important because in these deluges, we've been, these have been getting extremely wet. And you note that I've got a lot of stemminess. I've got a lot of air roots. I've got some, these are going to need some work. So at some point over the next couple of weeks, you may just be treated to me emptying these out and re doing a reset, but not until our little doves are done. We have a little pair of morning doves that are building a nest in the gutters and it is the sweetest, most precious thing to watch. So when they are finished and have fledged, we will go after this. Uh, another thing too, so many of you talk to me about about top dressings and you're confused about what to put in your pots. And I'm always telling you, be creative. You can see in my pots, I have everything from just basic three quarter inch Southwest Brown to, to green jade. You know, this is just all stuff that has been left over from jobs. And you know, you wouldn't think that I would put a mammalaria a cactus in a red pot with green rock but you know what it works here you know in this pot I've got black three-quarter inch and you know I'm always talking about detritus and this pot is right under this pink jasmine which you know is starting to deciduate and lose its blooms and look how noticeable they are in the black but look how unnoticeable they are in this neutral salt and pepper rock. So if you do have trees or plants that deciduate, this is an example of how important it is to under um, top dress with a more neutral colored rock so that you don't see every single leaf. Oh, fire glass. Some people aren't huge fans of fire glass. They say it's disco, but I think it's fantastic, especially coupled or paired with cactus because to me the fire glass is indicative of water. It feels wet to me. Um, here we have my Pilosoceros azurus and I've got creva, that white creva. Uh, I've got some sea anemones that I ordered online a long time ago that I thought would be cute a big piece of fire glass and then just some little cracked pieces. So I had a lot of fun with this. I didn't want to compete with this pot with more plants. So I just jazzed it up with top dressing, which you can do, you know, if you don't want to over plant a pot, get creative and use two or three different types of top dressing instead of multiple plants. What is this? What is this? Oh, this is um, a little cactus that is very, very dangerous. Uh, and it, it is, however, crested. So when it throws off a long branch that is not crested, I will prune that out. I want to maintain the crest on this plant. Um, this little guy uh, is something that Greg picked up at a plant sale and it is the ugliest thing but he loves it it's called a sypho sypho stemma hybrid sorry about that phone call <laughs> okay then this little potting bench um you know this wall right here actually is our neighbor's garage so i can't put any you know like pound nails into it or hang anything so i have freestanding i have my freestanding pergola and i have my freestanding little potting bench to kind of break up this huge space and lots of fun things in fun pots i don't know all the names of these plants some of them were gifted to me but notice how i've made an effort to get creative with my top dressings because these are collectibles and they're just a lot of fun 
So, you know, mix it up and have fun. Look for glass, look for marbles, look for, you know, buttons. I don't know, just fun things around the house that you can top dress with. Look here at this lith up. Lith ups notoriously hate water. So this is um, obviously got drainage, but look at how this lith up has rotted and deciduated, but this is fine. I've got lots of beautiful new growth. So am I worried about that one little piece that turned up its toes? You know what, I'm not. So when it softens up more, I'll gently remove it from the rest of the plant. But look at the overall health of your plants. Look at the new growth to determine if you've got a real problem because most of the time you don't. Oh yeah, check this out. This Echeveria, uh, this is a, uh, is a Giboflora hybrid that I cut, remember when I took and cut its head off and stuck it back in the pot? Um, I haven't done anything with it since I did that, but you know what? It has re-rooted. Re I'm pulling and nothing is happening. So that's exciting that this has reset a root system. I left my makeshift drainage on my pond last night because this morning we had so much rain that it had started to overflow and I had to drain it off again. And I'm still working on this area in between raindrops, but you know, it rained on all of these plants that I yanked out. I'm not worried about that. They're gonna be fine. They're not standing in any water. So not a concern at all. I'm gonna keep, you know, working on eliminating all the plants in that area, um, trimming, sizing, and resetting. Fountain is still looking great. The agave attenuata variegatus throwing off a new leaf. Remember, we cut that all up and reset it a couple of months ago and determined in a video that it has thrown off a new baby root system, which is very, very exciting. The new arrangement that uh, we did together in the raised bed looks great. You know, we got a lot of winds and a real deluge last night. But all my rocks, as you can see, have, have stabilized. Nothing has, nothing is askew. Nothing is askew. Everything looks fantastic. I'm very, very pleased with how that all held up. And while we're in the neighborhood, remember the Medio Picta Alba that the gophers, they cleaned all the roots off months and months and months ago, and it's just sat here and it hasn't done anything, but it still looks really good. So every now and then I check Oh, look, a root, finally, a really nice white root. See anything else under there, Hannah? No. Just that one root, but that's good news. That means that it's starting to re-anchor. So yay, Medio Picta. All right. And this is the stump from the Gave Attenuata Variegata, and it's starting to feel a little mushy We've got a baby attenuata variegata right here and one right here. I don't see anything else happening. I may have to saw this trunk lower if this, you know, continues to feel squishy and I feel like there's a lot of rot there. The cuttings that we took from mama plant that I just threw in a bucket are fine. These are all doing just dandy. So, you know, if you have plants that you don't really have a home for, you know, this is kind of the beginning of my garden of death. And I just kind of stick stuff over here because it's kind of a shady side in the garden. So, you know, I've got a couple of agave perii here that I had intended for a client, but I left them in the truck too long and they got sunburnt. This was last summer. So I just stuck them over here in more of a shady area in the hopes that it wouldn't take too long for all of that damage to grow out so that I could actually use these plants in a presentation. I've got, I don't have a whole lot in my garden of death right now because I've been pressing it into service during quarantine and you know planting a lot of things around my yard. But basically this is where plants go to live or die, but it's up to them. 
identify an area in your yard that's a little on the shady side, maybe morning sun, afternoon shade, and it's hidden from your view and the view of your neighbors. And just stick stuff there and forget about it. And then every now and then check on it. This, uh, this aloe is a piece that came out of the backyard around the fountain. And it's just a cutting, but I thought it looked really nice there. Look at, here's all my sprinkler valves. Remember, we never use our sprinklers, but we're all hooked up for them. And see how we've managed to conceal them? It's Bentley, sorry. With, oh, hi, Bentley. Bentley the succulent dog is looking through the window, wanting to know why he's not a part of this video. Honestly, I just forgot to bring him out. But see how I have basically covered up all of my valves with um, Aeoniums and Crassula? Pretty awesome. But yeah, this is just all stuff. Here's a piece of Aluaudia procera. It's just a cutting that I threw over there. This is just a uh, Confederate Jasmine, which I have a love-hate relationship with because it's kind of a lot of maintenance to keep it under control. My two famous beds that I rework for you every day practically are looking lively right now. But I wanted to take a minute um, to show you something here in the front yard. This is basically low maintenance. You know, all I've got out here now are barrel cactus and Aluaudia procera and a stand of Aeonium. And I'm gonna let the stand of Aeonium row go on and on until it doesn't look good anymore. And then I'll get rid of it. Um, but I really need this area to be low maintenance because I spend most of my time in the back. But what do you do when you have barrel cactus and they get weeds, see that? Yikes, how do you get at them? Well, all you have to do is dig them up where you can get at the weeds. I cannot begin to tell you how satisfying this is. Oh my gosh, I feel so great right now. Look at that, clean as a whistle. And then just manipulate your plant back into place. Kick the rocks back around and get on with your day. Some of you wanted to see where me, Mary Poppins, keeps all of these, these things. I keep telling you, oh, I found this rock in my garage. Well, when Greg and I finish up a job, we usually have a bag or two of rock left over. So here's, here's my lair. Here's uh, where Greg keeps all of his leftover irrigation tubing, basins. We got a fountain. We got bags of, you know, three quarters, one eighth, one half. Um, this is... This is where the magic happens here in the garage when I get inspired and that's the place where I come and pull things from. Uh, beyond that, that is my exciting day. I am going to continue to putter in between the raindrops. Uh, if you've got some weeds around some cactus, now would be a really, really good time to get out with protective gear. You might want, you know, gloves, goggles if the cactus are big shovel and uh, do your weeding. It's extremely satisfying. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And again, a special shout out to Aaron S. and Denise Chip. Thank you for joining the channel and for your financial support. I love you guys. Have a really great day. Bye. A couple of other uh, breaking news items that I forgot to mention is I'm going live again tomorrow, Thursday, April 9th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be in my loft on my couch upstairs. Now I need you to post in the comment section under this video your burning questions for me. Uh, and if you have joined my channel and you are a member, please go to the community page and post your questions there. So I will be sure to see them. Uh, also, the videos are going to be a little um, loosey-goosey in terms of when we, when we post. You know, we always try to post first thing in the morning, but with the rain, it's a little, little tricky. So I ask you to be patient. The videos will be coming up uh, at various times throughout the day until the rain clears up. Thanks, guys. Take care.